director of the uh, director of policy and public affairs at the Road Haulage Association. Afternoon to you, Rod. Hello, John. So we hear Meg Elliott there saying that the Brexit's own, and I'm quoting her now, its only detectable impact so far has been increased costs, paperwork, and border delays. Is that your experience and the experience of your members? Well, it's certainly the experience of the lorry drivers have been queuing for many hours at Dover on several days, uh, you know, since since the beginning of the year. Um, it's been painful. Uh, and we're worried that these were teething troubles to start because we had a couple of ferries out of action. Um, we had this new red tape coming in, forms to fill out and to be checked and some roadworks. Now, the ferries are back. Uh, the roadworks are just about done, and we've still got delays. So it must be something to do with the red tape, and the red tape is very complex, and people are making mistakes. And although they'll make fewer mistakes, just one mistake holds up the queue. Right, so how much of that, then, is a direct consequence of Brexit? Uh, well, everything to do with red tape is to do with post-Brexit arrangements. Because before Brexit, we didn't have any red tape and we had open borders and uh, no friction. And, and what are the costs and the consequences for, the, uh, for, for your members and for the companies that your members are serving in terms of well, just trying to do business? I think there are two effects. For the big businesses, uh, they can manage and, and the, the effect hasn't been too great. For SMEs, it's a nightmare because it adds cost. Delay adds cost. They have to get people to fill in these complex forms, uh, and I'm afraid it's getting worse. Uh, because as Meg Hillier said earlier, uh, what we're facing in July is checks, SPS checks, they're called on plant and animal uh, of goods, and there are 4,000 of those a day, 4,000 extra checks on top of the ones we've got now. Mm. And then come September, we've got biometric passport checks. So those are two big additional hurdles that we've got to get over, and we're struggling, as it were, with the first hurdle. So what do you say, what do you think when you hear, if you do hear, uh, people in government or elsewhere writing this off or, or dismissing it as teething troubles? Well, as I said, I mean, there would be teething pro tr troubles uh, at the beginning of January with people unfamiliar with the red tape, with two or three ferries out of action for repairs and for roadworks. But the ferries are back. The roadworks are just about done. Uh, uh, people have had a go at at least trying to fill the forms in, and they're still struggling. Uh, and it only needs one person to hold up the queue because it's a bit like a, a supermarket uh, checkout effect, if you like. You know, you're in a supermarket queue, and the person in front of you suddenly produces a whole lot of uh, coupons for money off, and one of them is wrong, and then there's another one needs to be checked, and, and that quickly creates a queue behind you. Uh, now, of course, in a supermarket, you could simply open another till. But we can't do that at Dover because of the way the town is constructed and the, the road system is constructed. It's very, very tight. Mm. Space is limited. So you get big queues. So we need some creative thinking from the politicians to work this one through. Because yeah. I don't think we could just leave it alone. It does sound quite worrying, especially since, well, as, as borders open up and they are going to open up, the COVID period is hopefully through the worst and heading, we're heading towards the light at the end of the tunnel but the light at the end of the tunnel, the tunnel just just illuminates a whole lot of new problems as volumes of traffic build up that's right john i think you know what we're what we're thinking is look sps is going to be a big barrier these extra checks in july so why don't the eu and the uk have a serious conversation give a bit of ground and see if we can do away with some of these sps checks um, you know, the, the food standards are very high in the UK, very high in the EU. We've always trusted them. They've always trusted us. So can, if we could just sweep those aside, that would be a big win. And the other thing is, light touch is needed. You know, the more uh, customs officers check and double check and triple check and say this isn't good enough, the more friction we're going to get. It's not satisfactory, but I think we need a, a, a light touch in the interests of British business. Right, well, we, your appeal has gone out. Thanks for that perspective from the, well, the front line.